So hello out there, this is Glenn, and in today's video we're looking at the differences between a basalt and a gabbro. So chemically, these two rocks are the same, or very similar, because over the whole planet you get different variations in the basalt. So these two rocks are basalt, different structures as you can see. And you also get different variations in gabbro. So, but all rocks are based on a set of criteria. And basalt and gabbro are no different. Uh, first things first, you can get this confused with another rock. So this is a basalt. Uh, about 10 minute walk from where I live. My house is built on basalt. Uh, that's about between one and two million years old and this rock here comes from the river and I have a metamorphosed mudstone so this is Hornfells this is from the Wilhelmina Falls walk and that's been metamorphosed uh, by another igneous rock not a basalt uh, a granodiorite and as you can see they look fairly similar you can get finer grained basalts down the creek i didn't actually pick up one maybe i will and you can see that they look pretty much the same um, this one does have small vesicles so it is a lot higher up than i should have collected it so the difference between these two basalts is that this one is near the top of the basalt flow so it has lots of vesicles as you can see, vesicles are just air bubbles of different types of gases, water vapour as well. It's trying to escape the magma. And these formations you will find most of the time up the top, a large concentration of them. You can find them in the basalt flow where either it's the top of a previous flow or the top part of the flow has been remixed back into the uh, uh, in a basalt lava. Or another thing is that it could be like a degassing event in the lava. It's just been uh, uh, in a pocket that has not solidified, uh, but then the gases can't escape because either the top part of it's solidified and the gases won't escape, so they're just trapped in the lava. Uh, so there's various reasons why you can find vesicles. And this makes the density of the rock a lot lower. So density of basalts around about 2.9 grams per centimetre cubed. Uh, Gabbro will be probably about 3.5, something like that, depending on the, the actual type of rock. Uh, but the density of these two basalts will be different. So this one, if I got the same amount of rock, will be a lot heavier because of all the vesicles that are in this one. If you look at the basalt here, you can see, you can start to see the crystals forming. Uh, but there's still very fine grain, so you need a microscope to actually distinguish what type of crystals are in this rock. And that is uh, the basalt. Then we have the gabbros. Gabbros have larger crystals. It, the composition of these ones is about uh, less than 10% spelled spaphoids. So spelled spaphoids are like quartz, but they include aluminium. So quartz is silicon ox dioxide. Uh, Failed spaphoids is aluminium silicon dioxide or round about, depending on what type of um, failed spaphoid you actually use because uh, there's it's a, actually a group, it's not one single mineral. And quartz can also be categorized into different types of quartz as well. Yeah. Basalt has less than 20% quartz. And about 65 to 100% plagioclase. So plagioclase is 
uh, the sodium aluminium silicate or the calcium aluminium silicate and as you can see it's salt and pepper so what are the colors that you can see within these rocks if we get closer most of these lighter crystals are the plagioclase so as you can see it's quite a lot the darker crystals are usually uh, pyroxene hornblende could be amphibole olivine it's very hard to tell what the actual composition of this rock is what you would need to do is do a chemical analysis uh, but because most people who get these rocks don't have the money to do that so you go to geological reports personally i don't know where this rock came from i actually got it from a course i done a long time ago and that is uh open learning earth revealed so this is rock specimen four uh, which is uh the gabbro and And because there is a lot of crystals, it's hard to distinguish between the different crystals. I'm going to say that this, all these light colours are plagioclase. So I don't see much quartz, there might be quartz there, uh, but it still could be plagioclase. Uh, the darker crystals that we see there are most likely pyroxene and it could be amphibile. There's also smaller amounts of olivine, which is usually yellow, yellow, green, but I don't see any in this rock. And if we turn it around, this is the erosional surface, so this has been altered. There's another part there. And here we have what? A brownish colour? That might be uh, because of erosion. As you can see, you've got the brownish colour at the top here. So it's definitely the eroded part of the surface. And here we have a larger depression. Which looks like it might be a lot of pyroxene. You can also get biotite and augite in these rocks. Uh, I can't see any. I thought I saw some biotite before. So if we look at the actual. Oh, yeah, there you go. That looks like biotite there. So it's a flat crystal and it looks like a sheet type structure. Uh, biotite. Biotites are not that common in these rocks, so most of this rock doesn't have biotite. Uh, yep, so most of this is plagioclase, amphibole, and pyroxene. And the other minerals are pretty small. So that is gabbro and basalt. So these are uh, pretty much come from this one would have come from a mantle plume that's under Victoria or decompressional uh, the way the actual magma comes up from decompression and this one without knowing where it's from which is a bit sad because context is everything uh, this is most likely from the same type of uh, decompression that's happened and what do I mean decompression I mean the rocks come up from the upper mantle into the crust uh, but it's only cooled down at roughly about 0.3 degrees every kilometre. So it's still quite warm. And then the pressure gets taken off. So then it starts to melt, partial melting. And uh, then the rest you should know from uh, hot spots. So this is very interesting. Now what else can I say about these rocks? Uh, usually you'll find them in the same locality. Uh, if... Like here we have basalt on the surface. Uh, the gabbro probably has not formed underground, so we've probably still got the molten batholith underground. And 
if uh, we wait a few million years and erosion probably happens uh, you might be able to get two of these rocks in the same place uh, but you know the, the gabbro is probably on a few kilometers underground so you'd need probably a few hundreds of thousands of years to remove the crust rock and then you'll probably remove most of the basalt so when you get the gabbro starting to come up the basalt's probably already been eroded away so that's why you probably can't find them most of the time in the same locality from the same source but you know you can find them in the same locality uh, in Victoria we do have a locality that does have uh, is it rhyolite and granodiorite which are pretty much equivalent oh, maybe I'm a bit confused there anyway don't worry I missed the confusion so uh, that is these two rocks here I'll leave the video I hope it helps you with uh, learning your different rock types and uh, have fun with geology it's just very interesting to learn this stuff thank you and goodbye